Merchant Tua and Michael Moore. Larry Merchant, David Tua's trainer, Kevin Barry, says of his fighter that he is the biggest wasted talent, the biggest underachiever in the heavyweight division. Sounds like a serious indictment. Is he just trying to fire up his charge? Hoping that the truth will make Tua free. <laughs> uh, free to fully capitalize on his championship quality qualities. A great chin. He's never been seriously hurt, much less knocked down. And a knockout punch, which has taken him a long way, but not all of the way. And yet Tua, at 29, is the second youngest of the big heavyweights out there. Only Vladimir Klitschko, at 26, is younger. So perhaps there is time for him to make some changes to achieve or even overachieve, or perhaps what we've seen is what we'll get. All right, and it's the expectation of experts as we turn to Emmanuel Stewart. Emmanuel, it's the expectation of experts that, that, that Michael Moore has his best chance of avoiding being knocked out by David Tua. If he can get to Moore and put some hurt on him, or get to Tua, I should say, and put some hurt on him early. Again, we establish that Emmanuel, who has a long relationship with Moore, has been training him for these past three weeks. We don't have any fear whatsoever about your objectivity. <laughs> can Moore get Tua hurt early so that he backs him off a little bit? I think he can, and he must try to do that. But the one thing you must remember, whenever you fight David Tua, you have to be technical with him. You, George Foreman uh, never fought him, but George was probably the biggest physical man we've had outside of Lennox Lewis recently. And when Lennox beat him, Lennox beat him, even though he was much bigger, by out finessing him. He hurt him early to get his attention and slowed him down a little bit, but he out finessed him. The other guy that beat him, our smallest heavyweight. Chris Beard, not a big puncher, but they both beat him the same way by out finessing him and being very technical. Neither one of those guys tried to physically manhandle David Tour. I think he's one of the strongest guys out there in boxing and a dangerous puncher as he's been in the early round and the late rounds because he's had great knockouts in the late rounds with significant big name fighters, which means and he's very dangerous early as well, even though Michael Moore and he both have a lot of early round knockouts, David has proven to be dangerous all night. So Moore's got his work cut out. Ten rounds, he's going to be facing danger. All right, let's look at the tail of the tape for Michael Moore against David Tua. Two familiar faces in the heavyweight division. And as Larry points out, Tua, despite all of his travails and his rise and fall in the in the division, is still only 29. Moore at 34 thinks of himself as a guy with a lot left who can still make an impact. Five-inch height advantage for Moore, six-and-a-half-inch reach advantage for Moore at 224. Michael is as sleek and well-trained. He's hard, at, hard as a diamond, looks as good as he has in years. Tua at 243, still struggling to get down to what most people think is his better weight of 230 or 235 around in there. Unofficial rules, or I should say official rules of the fight, with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. David Tua, Michael Moore fight is scheduled for 10 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case because it's caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards after four rounds have been completed, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 10th and final round. Jim. Michael Moore took three years off from the ring following his loss to Evander Holyfield in 1997. By his own admission, he was disoriented, discontented, had lost his zest for the sport, and battled problems with alcohol. All of that under control now. Moore looks as good as he's looked at a long time. Let's remember, Jim, that Michael Moore won his first 26 fights, 22 of them as a light heavyweight, by knockouts or TKOs. And he has lost only to George Foreman and Evander Holyfield. But let's also remember that he hasn't had a significant win since he lost to Foreman eight years ago. The most significant southpaw in the heavyweight division steps through the ropes. And along with a snippet of action from some of his most significant fights with Larry again, a closer look at former champion Michael Moore. This is the Moore who upset Evander Holyfield to win the heavyweight championship of the world and become the first southpaw ever to hold the title. And then, of course, against George Foreman, who was waiting to land the right hand that ultimately ended the fight dramatically. 
He came back recently against a young man named Davis. Robert Davis. Robert hurt him badly, stopped, knocked him down twice in the first round, and then went on to win a 10-round decision. David Tua outboxed by Ike Ibeabuchi in one of the greatest heavyweight fights of the last 20 years, a fight that broke all the CompuBox records for punches thrown by heavyweights. Then later outboxed by Lennox Lewis when he got his chance at the title and outboxed by Chris Bird as well. But in various other fights where Tua has been outboxed, he's been able to bail himself out with late knockouts. In fact, the late knockout from even or behind on the scorecards is pretty much a David Tua specialty. Uh, he is a stoic Buddha with power. And I'm with him, baby, so many he switched promoters midway through his career, and one of the staff members from his old promoter came to me tonight and said, you know, after what we saw against Jeff Wooden early in his career, we would never have put him in against another Southpaw. I don't think it's necessarily just Southpaws that give to a trouble. Boxers do. Let's take a closer look with Larry Merchant. Some of the highlights and lowlights. He first made his announcement as a big time fighter in an even fight when he came on and stopped David Eisen late in the fight. Then, of course, he was outboxed by Lennox Lewis and gave a disappointing performance because he just didn't throw enough punches. And then against Chris Bird. Bird just neutralized that left hook, didn't let him land it. A powerful punch isn't a punch if you can't land it. And finally, against Frez Akendo, he was losing every round and once again came on late, but this time notably with right hands, something we hadn't seen before. Two quality heavyweights in the ring. The winner, in theory, will move into position for a chance to fight number one contender Vladimir Klitschko in the fall. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, from Donald Trump's Taj Mahal Casino Resort here on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey. This is the main event of the evening. 10 rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. Brought to you by Gill Promotions, DeBella Entertainment, Cedric Kushner Promotions, Main Events, and the Motion Picture Undisputed, starring Wesley Snipes and Bing Rames in U.S. Theaters Friday, August 23rd. Sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., Chairman Gerald Gormley. The three judges at ringside scoring this contest on the 10-point must system will be John Potteray, John Stewart, and Steve Weisfeld. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, former U.S. Olympic fencing teamer Rudy Battle. And now, from the Trump Taj Mahal of Atlantic City to the men and women now serving in the armed forces of the United States of America, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get her ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing green and officially weighing in at 224 pounds. His professional record stands at 43 victories, including 34 knockouts with two losses and a draw and three world titles. Fighting out of Detroit, Michigan, here is the former light heavyweight world champion and former two-time heavyweight champion of the world, Michael Moore. <laughs> a 
and his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trimmed with white, and officially weighing 243 pounds. He brings an outstanding professional record to the ring, consisting of 40 victories, including 35 knockouts, with only three defeats. From South Auckland, New Zealand, currently rated by all as one of the best heavyweights in the world, the tour man, David. Take the bees off. Okay, gentlemen, you've both received your pre-fight instructions. I expect a clean break at all times. I'm looking forward to a nice, clean contest. Protect yourselves at all times. Good luck to both of you. Shake hands. Emmanuel, is it possible for heavyweights to give us a Gaddy versus a Ward? Yeah, or, you know. A, or a Morales versus a Barrera? Or do they hit too hard? Yeah, but it can happen. You know, don't forget, Michael Moore has been in one of those with Bert Cooper. And also, too, has been in a, a few of them himself, too. I think uh, one of the fights, I think, when he fought with I, Izod and also uh, a bad I get me a Butcher. Oh, so the Abe Butcher yeah, fight yeah. was unbelievable. Yeah, they've both been in those side fights. On the other hand, this could become a chess match if Moore is able to box for 36 minutes, or for 30 minutes, I should say. It's scheduled for 10, not for 12. Get off of here. David Tua gets in two body punches early. Moore, the rip cage of Moore, and down goes Moore. I was say Moore leading in. He's not moving at all. It's over with. Here's a 30-second knockout right there. And that's what makes David Tua David Tua. Well, and also, Jim, it was the body punches that made it happen. Absolutely. And body punches is something we never used to see David Tua throw. He was so left hook conscious, thinking that he would always get the left hook in, that he didn't work on his other stuff. That was what was impressive about that knockout. He's throwing his right hand a lot more and more confident, but... Mora bent down and instead of moving around and then right into the power and Tua came out and started to punch him. Very busy, didn't waste any time at all. This is very Nothing. reminiscent of Tua's knockout of John Ruiz in 19 seconds several years ago, a fight which has had a marked effect on the heavyweight division since then and has been mentioned so frequently that Ruiz <laughs> is sick to death of hearing about it, but that's... That's about the same thing that happened to Ruiz, where Tua yeah. just simply came out, caught him with power shots early, and Ruiz never recovered. Michael Moore tasted those two body shots and was gone. As we Moore. pointed yeah. out, Jim, Michael Moore had a terrific career early on. He hadn't won a significant fight in eight years. David Tua was beating a name more than a serious heavyweight opponent tonight. And Tua came in seemingly much more spirited and much more into the fight. Moore came in very, very relaxed, as if he really didn't want to be here. Well, guys, let's take a look at the entire round in normal speed. And Emmanuel, Larry's going to the ring, so you and I will watch this again. Watch the body shots early. Boom. Moore is bending in too much. He's not utilizing his height at all. In fact, it's being to his disadvantage by being in because he can't punch as effectively. There's a hard right hand by right Tua. Hand. Well, you talk about how much he's improved his right hand. That was a straight right cross. It was more of a right hook, I think. Yeah, right swept hook, it a right little. Right. You're right. And Moore didn't even see it. Fighting in too close where he's not effective and the guy with the short arms is extremely comfortable in that position. Well, Michael Moore said, no matter what happens, even if I lose the fight, that's not the end of me as a contender because lots of things can happen in the heavyweight division. But because of the nature of the loss, he may be whistling in the dark. It may be very difficult for him to come back, and especially in view of the fact that he has not done anything impressively for the most part in the last eight years. Emmanuel, you've spent a lot of time with Michael in the past few weeks. Did you have a sense that something like this could be possible? It's always possible. But you know, the one thing that's really difficult with Michael, he does not like boxing. And it's very difficult for anybody to be extremely successful, in particular competing on this level up here. 
in a sport where he doesn't really like. And uh, But Tua came in much more into the fight, I think, mentally and, and spiritually, and that was a big, big factor in addition to his punching power. David Tua celebrates a stunning 30-second knockout victory. I call it 30. Let's hear the official timing from Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Trump Taj Mahal, this contest comes to an end. The official time, 30 seconds into round number one. Your referee, Rudy Battle, waves off the 10 count and calls a halt to the bout. The winner by knockout victory, Tua Man, David Tua. Well, there was a hunch that Michael Moore might be able to use his greater skill to outbox David Tua. He never got the chance. Tua came out and landed eight of 12 power punches. He threw four jabs. They were non-essential in the attack. Moore never got off at all. And you can see that it only took 16 total thrown punches for David Tua to score the 32nd knockout of Michael Moore. And Larry Merchant stands by with the winner, David Tua. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, David. David, leading up to the fight, there were two salient points being made. One was of your friendship with Michael Moore. Did that mean anything to you in this fight? Not tomorrow, Lungi. Not tomorrow, Lungi. For four, Zinga, but for five, love you, mom. Some water to eat, man. Wow, Larry. Um, you know, like I said, you know, um, I'm a friend of Michael's from before. I'm always going to be his friend tonight. It was strictly business, nothing personal. I came out. We worked very, very hard in the gym uh, to make it work, and I thank God everything worked out great tonight. The other thing was your manager and trainer said that you were the biggest underachiever in the heavyweight division. Did that anger you, inspire you? What does it mean to you? Well, um... Nobody will understand why I do what I do, but it's about the person next to you. Uh, I'm just happy to be given an opportunity. Uh, I respect what he, what Kevin feels, and, uh, you know, I, I believe it too, but, you know, I just got to have to concentrate on this fight and just trying to uh, do better. All right. What we saw, even in that brief time, was one how you went to the body and threw right hands. This is something that you used to not do and stay active. Is this the kind of thing... Kevin Barry has been trying to Barry been trying to get you to do. Larry, you couldn't have said it any better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a look at that fight. It won't take us very long. Describe what you see. Well, uh, I came in. I knew it was gonna either come out fast or, or, or come out slow. And uh, you know, just by the look of things, when he took his uh, rope off, he was very uh, dry. So uh, you know, we we practiced uh, in the gym what we were gonna do tonight, and we came out and did it. We sat fast, worked to the body, and then go to the top. Did you have any kind of phobia about southpaws? You've had difficulty with southpaws going back beyond Bird to some other fellows who gave you a hard time. Mr. Merchant, man, what can I say? You know, everything else has happened for a reason. You know, it's a learning experience. All I can do is to learn from it and move on. Do you have any specific opponents you would like to see? Just, uh, what, do you, what do you think, Kev? Larry, David too has never dodged any opponent right throughout his career, so why would we start now? All right, so where do we want to start? Is it, would you want to fight Bird again, or Rockman again, what or? What we want to do is we want to enjoy the victory that we've just had tonight, yeah. a brilliant victory, yeah. and then we'll take care of the business yeah. after that. As Kevin said, you know, uh, I'm happy to fight anybody, but uh, you know, like I said before, you know, the, the obvious dream is to, to fight for the title again, but uh, more than anything else, I would like to sit on more realistic terms and ask to concentrate on fighting tonight and uh, enjoy this victory and uh, we're looking forward to going back to the drawing board and uh, waiting to see who we're going to fight next. Do you think that you're young enough to be totally revived off of these last two victories over Akendo and Mura to give you and catapult you in a fresh way up to the top of the division? 
I know uh, uh, how I feel. And uh, as an analyst, how do you think, sir? Well, I think we all saw <laughs> what we saw. Thank you very much, David. Thank you. Manuel Asso. Jim. Happy mom. All right, thanks very much. Um, I think it's fairly clear what we learn about Moorer from a, a moment of violence like that. What, if anything, do we learn about Tua from 30 seconds of action against uh, an opponent who went away? Tua is still a very dangerous fighter. I would say this year, in, in more, in two fighters come in the ring, both have their own plan. Moore's strategy was to basically to move away and keep him at a distance and play games with him. Tua's strategy was to hem him up and crowd him and to punch him. And Tua was successful. His plan worked. And Moore bending down into the punches made it even easier. I was very impressed with his punching power. But nevertheless, we don't know if he has to fight somebody else that's going to be moving a lot more. It may be a little more difficult. Yeah. But Moore made it easier for him tonight, and he did what he was supposed to do. Let's hear what Michael has to say about it as he stands by with Larry in the ring. Thank you, Jim. Michael, it happened very fast, almost before you could get into the fight. What did you see and feel? Well, it felt good coming into the fight. I um, I saw him coming, trying to put pressure on me, and I knew what I had to do to keep my jab off of him. But he tried to overpower and overwhelm me, and I still tried to punch with him. But as I was trying to punch with him, I tried to get away. And, and those looping punches will catch you all the time. He went to the body very quickly. Did that sort of keep you stationary, more stationary than you wanted? No, not at all. No, he, he, I knew he went to the body early, and I knew that he wanted to box, but he tried to get in. He tried to feel, I guess, to, to feel the power to come in, but I'm not worried about it. All right, I'm after... disappointed because of the loss, but I'll always be back. So after a three-year layoff, you come back. This is your sixth fight, your first against a major opponent. It's obviously a, a big disappointment. Where do you go now? Back to the gym. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna retire. I'm not gonna do anything like that. I'm gonna still fight, you know, because I know my abilities. I know what I'm capable of doing. Thank you very much, Michael. You're welcome, Jim. All right, thanks a lot, Larry. Emmanuel, uh, you know Michael uh, about as well as, if not better than anyone else. Will he go back to his present training situation with Freddie Roach in L.A.? Will he try to come back to Detroit and get with you? If he asks you, should he continue fighting, or are you going to say, do whatever you want to do? What's up? Well, you asked me a lot of tough questions right now. I asked you three I, of I, them. I, I, yeah. know it, I, I don't want to deal with any of them right now. I just want to see that, make sure he's safe. And hurt, you know, and that, but that was a very painful loss, but I had told him that this would happen if you come out slow and you come out feeling around with Tua, because Tua's going to come out very fast. And seemingly he wasn't at one when he came into the ring. He seemed to be cold, and Tua came out and went straight after him. He's got a rough decision to make, especially in view of the fact that he has not did anything impressively in boxing in a long time. You're hurting right now. I can see that, no. that this has hurt you a good deal, and, and obviously your link to Michael is very deep. Are you hurting just because of the moment that he's been through here? Or are you worried about him and his future? Well, both. You know, don't forget, I was the one that really brought Michael into professional boxing, and, and people seem to forget that he had 31 fights with me and never lost, and he had, I think, 28 knockouts, uh, 29 knockouts. So it's very close. I brought him to boxing. He lived with me and raised him. In fact, he used to call me Pops. He wanted to even change his last name to Stuart. So it's a very close bond there. But this is the heavyweight business, and this is boxing. And he got caught with a good puncher, and that's it. So He's still a good man. Larry? Your final comments on David Tua's summary destruction of Michael Moore. Well, Jim, uh, early on we wondered what heavyweight amazement we would have tonight in a 30-second knockout qualifies. We often wonder whether big guys make too much money just because they're big guys, whether our values are all screwed up because we usually see better fights among smaller guys. But there we saw in 30 seconds something that takes your breath away and is the reason that people are so entranced by heavyweights. Something dramatic may happen at any moment, and it did tonight. Indeed. Well, we'll have a final word on what happened here in the ring in just a moment. Right now, let's look ahead to some upcoming programs here on HBO.